It's been a little bit since we've cooked anything. We're gonna make an Instapot dish tonight. We're making Instapot pinto beans with Spanish chorizo. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting recipe here. We're looking forward to sharing it with you. All right, so let's get started. Uh, okay, uh, first of all, we're gonna turn our uh, Instapot into saute mode on the lower setting. Then we're gonna add in four ounces of cubed chorizo and we're going to saute that until the edges get crispy. All right, we're gonna start with adding a tablespoon of olive oil into the bottom of the pot. Then we're gonna turn the Instapot into, onto saute mode, but on the less setting so that it's not quite so hot. And then we're gonna add in four ounces of diced chorizo. And we're going to saute that until it becomes slightly crispy around the edges. Now the instructions say that while this is sauteing, go ahead and dice up a yellow onion and three uh, cloves of garlic. Well, you can see I've already done that, so we're, we're ahead of the game. Once the chorizo has sauteed and become crispy, then we're going to add both of these onions and garlics to the saute. All right, with the chorizo edges crispy, let's go ahead and add the onions. And the garlic. And we will continue to saute this until the onions become transparent. Smells amazing. All right, next, once the uh, onions are transparent, the next thing we add are the dried pinto beans. Now, it does not say to soak them. It says to take them straight out of the package and dump them dry into the pot. We dump the beans into the pot and it says to absorb some of the heat from the bottom of the pot before we add in the liquids. So, we're gonna add in the, the beans, two bay leaves, and some cracked pepper. All right, now we're gonna add three cups of low sodium chicken broth. And now we're gonna put on the lid, close the steam valve, and set this to high pressure for 35 minutes. Then we're gonna let it naturally depressurize. All right, we'll see you back here in 35 minutes plus depressurization time. All right, the 35 minutes is up. We're gonna let this naturally uh, depressurize. In the meantime, I'm gonna make up a batch of rice, which I'm gonna have with mine. Victoria's gonna have hers with chips. So uh, I'll be making up the rice, and when this depressurizes, we have, I believe, just one more step to go, and we'll be ready to give this a try. All right, we're hungry, so I'm gonna go ahead and let the rest of this pressure out. We have another step here, and we'll get to that as soon as it's ready. All right, with it depressurized, we're gonna open it, give it a quick stir, and then we have to pour these diced onions in. All right, we're adding in the diced tomatoes. And now we're gonna turn this on saute in normal mode and let this bubble a little bit and thicken up. All right, we're gonna let this bubble a little bit and we will keep an eye on our rice and very shortly it'll be done. Now, when it's finished, uh, we again, serve it in a bowl and eat with chips or over a bowl of rice and then we can top it with whatever we want. We can top it with some green onions, with some cheese. We're gonna put 
some Greek yogurt on top, uh, wh whatever you would normally put on chili or something of this nature. So uh, when it's ready, we'll serve it. That should be shortly. All right, it's done. It took quite a while to get this done. The recipe said it would be an hour and 15 minutes. I'd say it was at least that, maybe a little longer. Mainly because I had to boil it afterwards to make sure the beans were completely done and to get it to thicken up. And as you remember, I had to add a little bit of cornstarch to that. Now, we're all ready to serve it up. Victoria has hers just in a bowl with some tomatoes on top and a little bit of yogurt and a chip. Ready? Ready. It smells delicious, by the way, the yummy, yummy smelling process. Mmm. Is it good? Mm hmm Really yummy. I'm gonna get a bigger bite of, ooh, or not. Okay. Sausage. Sorry about that. Mm. Shriek says good. Mm -hmm. And it is plenty, plenty salty. Okay, good. All right, now I had mine over rice, and then I put some cheese on top of that and a big glob of the Greek yogurt. What he was talking about that. See, see the rice and beans and cheese and yogurt. Let's get a little bit of all of that. Mm. The yogurt's nice and tart. I love that. I did not get a bit of chorizo in that, so let's try that again. Try it. Tastes really, really good. What it really tastes, though, is hearty. This is rib stick and food. Something you might want to consider having later in the fall or the winter. Because uh, I can promise you we'll be sweating here shortly eating mm. this. But that's fine. Uh, tastes pretty good. Pretty simple ingredients overall. And probably really, really healthy. I want to point out there's a difference between Mexican chorizo, chorizo and Spanish chorizo. And so apparently it's very important to get the Spanish or dry chorizo. Yes, the recipe specifically called for dry chorizo. You'll see that. I'll have it down in the description below. On that note, we're going to go ahead and go eat and enjoy this. And maybe if you try it, you'll enjoy it too. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.